my name is Valentina, but I go by Val and I'm 13 years old. What age did you start playing your instrument? I started playing when I was five, so I've been playing for eight years now. Um, my older sister was already playing both piano and violin, so I naturally picked up one of the instruments, so it was violin. How many hours do you practice your instrument each day? I try to do at least three hours a day on weekdays, so on average maybe three to four hours, and on Sundays, because I'm free, I get to do more. How do you make a sound on the violin? There is the violin, and then there is the bow that you hold in your right hand. And the bow is made out of a horse's tail's hair, um, but in this process, no horses are harmed. Um, to make a sound on the violin, you pull the bow across the string as well as pluck the strings. And when you do this, vibrations go to the bridge, which is this. And then inside the violin, um, first to the top layer of the violin, through the sound post, which is a small pole that goes from here to here, um, and then out of the F holes, which are these, because they look like an F. Um, there are four different strings, uh, G, the most left string, um, is the thickest string and the lowest string on the violin. There's D, this one, to the right, um, and it's the second string from the left. And there's A, the third one, and E, the thinnest and the highest. And this is the G, D, A, E. And, um, the right hand with your bow, you uh, can also pluck the strings like this. And your left hand, um, you use your fingers to press on the strings onto the fingerboard, which is this blackboard. So this was an open A string, but if you press it down, it makes a different sound. What was the first song you learned on the violin? The first song I learned on the violin was Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and I started in Suzuki's book number one, um, and it goes like this. able to learn some different variations of Twinkle Twinkle with different rhythms um, with like What is your favorite piece to play on the violin? My favorite piece varies constantly depending on what I'm playing at the moment. Um, so if I'm playing new pieces, those are usually the ones that I enjoy most. Um, but of course, I love listening to other pieces that I haven't played yet. Um, things that I'm looking forward to playing in the future, like some concertos like Tchaikovsky and Beethoven. Um, but at the moment, I'm playing the Konis Concerto. And here's some a part that I like. My name is Sam, and me and my friend, Professor Troublemaker, are so excited for our upcoming concert, Troublemaker's History of Music, Part 1. 
This is an extra special show and discovery guide because we are going to go over all of classical music. A very special lesson that we get to learn today is how much music changes. We're going to listen to music from the Baroque era, the classical era, the Romantic era, and finally, music from the last 120 years. Each one of these eras has a completely different type of music, and I am so excited to share all four of them with you today. The Baroque era is our oldest genre of music for today and started over 400 years ago. Something special about the music of this time was that performers got to do something called improvising. To improvise something means that you make it up right on the spot. In Baroque music, improvising sounded like this. Making up something on the spot is a very hard thing to do, but also a very fun way to make music. Because of this, people have kept improvising through lots of different music. Even right now, jazz musicians are still using the same skills from 400 years ago to improvise or make something up on the spot, music that sounds like this. From 1750 to 1830, we begin the classical era. This was a very exciting time for music. Composers like Mozart and Beethoven lived in this time and there were lots of new instruments. Can anybody guess this instrument that became popular during the classical era? That's right, a piano. During this time, the orchestra also got much bigger and added instruments like the clarinet, the oboe, the flute, the French horn, and trumpets. From 1830 to 1900, we enter the Romantic era. During this time, composers wrote big and dramatic music about nature, books, and emotions. Romantic composers also started adding new notes into their music. Instead of only using notes from the scale, like in the classical era, romantic composers added other notes to be able to make sounds like this. The music of this time was all about making things bigger and different than before. Some composers even wrote pieces for an orchestra of 120 people, which made for very, very loud music. There was also some very exciting operas written during this time. Um, when I grew up, there was a really, really good baritone, and that's the kind of voice I am. It's a lower man's voice. Um, and his name was Dmitry Borosovsky. Probably a really, really hard name to say. He was from Russia. Uh, and he had this beautiful, beautiful aria um, from an Italian opera by Verdi called Don Carlo. Uh, and in this aria, man, you, you could swear that he did not take a single breath throughout that aria. And that was just such something that was so inspiring to me to just like be able to sing something that beautifully, that sustained. Um, and the aria kind of went a little bit like this. It was. Uh, Io morro, which means um, I will die for you. And this is Rodrigo singing to his best friend Don Carlo about how, you know, they've been through it all and they've been best friends throughout it. And, you know, some unfortunate events have happened. And, you know, he's happy at the end of the day that he got to be Don Carlo's friend and, you know, help him out with it, all of his troubles. And the argument goes a little bit something like this. Io morro. Così 
Reservoir. Finally, we end with all of the music that was written from 1900 all the way to right now. These past 120 years have been all about how we can change music. There are lots of new composers, and even somebody as young as you and your classmates can write music too. In our next concert, we have all the best pieces of music from long, long ago, but you will also get to hear music written by young composers who are still in school. Just like Mozart and Beethoven changed the music of their times, these composers are writing new sounds and new ideas that we are so excited to listen to. Here's a sneak peek of what composer Yuri Lee is working on for this concert. My name is Olivia Zetterwali. I'm a baritone here at the Yale School of Music, and I'm so excited to meet all of you guys this weekend. What is your instrument? My instrument is my voice. How do you practice your instrument? Well, there's like a couple things that you can really do, like on a given day when you are ready to sing. Um, because my voice is my instrument, um, it also involves the rest of my body. So a lot of the times when I'm about to start singing, I'll do a couple of jumping jacks or something just a little bit to get my blood moving and get really excited to get into the work. Um, you know, another thing that I've really learned um, as I've just grow up and listen to all different types of music, um, especially singers, is some of the best singers that I've ever watched sing like music videos or even opera singers or musical theaters they just have such an easy time singing. It doesn't look like they're doing a lot of work and their voice sounds like it just comes out of nowhere. Um, and I think what I've learned as I've gone through school is, you know, the best singers have zero, zero uh, kind of discomfort when they're singing and learning how to sing naturally without any discomfort or any str additional stress. Um, when I first started learning how to sing, there was a really great uh, Italian art song called Caro Mio Ben, which means My Dear Beloved. Uh, great, you know, typical Italian piece. When I was young, I, you know, maybe wasn't, maybe had a harder time trying to make it comfortable. It kind of sounded like a little bit like this. Uh, Caro Mio Ben, which, as you can hear, there's a little bit of separation in between each of those kind of uh, notes. And now, as I'm a little bit older and I've been trained a little bit longer, I've realized the importance of being able to sustain uh, the, the notes downwards. Um, that's a big part of making this comfortable, is just not trying to have any interruptions in each pitch. So now it's a little bit closer to this. <laughs> So that's, that's how I get ready to sing, I guess, and how I learn how to sing. <laughs> Hi everyone! Welcome back to Storytime with me, Jordan. Today we have a really wonderful book called The Magic Flute, an opera by Mozart and adapted by Kira Tice. Let's get to it! Once upon a time, on a day that seemed like any other, Prince Tamino was out hunting in the forest. It was such a lovely day that he didn't hear a strange sound behind him, a sound that grew louder and louder. Suddenly, snap, sizzle, roar! A huge dragon crashed through the trees, its flaming mouth wide open. Help, help! Tamino shouted as he ran through the forest as fast as he could the roaring monster just a few steps behind him. I can't run any farther! He exclaimed, collapsing to the ground unconscious. <gasps> just then, three gleaming silver arrows streaked through the air and struck the dragon. With a thundering crash, the dragon fell dead. 
From out of the shadow steps three lovely young ladies, bows still in hand. They approach Tamino. Who can he be? They asked each other. Surely he is a prince. We must tell the queen of the night. And away they went. Prince Tamino awoke to find the dragon dead at his feet. Who killed this terrible monster and saved my life? Tamino gasped in surprise. I did, boasted a lively looking fellow covered in feathers. Who are you? Asked Tamino. I am Papageno, the bird catcher, the man replied. If it weren't for me, you'd be dead. How'd you do it? Tamino asked. When you're as brave as I am, it's easy, answered Papageno. Look at Papageno's outfit. It is so colorful and bold. I love it. Kaboom! With a sudden clap of thunder, the queen of the night appeared before them. Nonsense! She snapped her hard eyes, flashing angrily. My lady slew that dragon! Then the queen softened her voice and smiled sadly at Tamino. Please forgive my anger. Take pity on a poor, heartbroken mother. The evil sorcerer Sarastro has stolen my daughter. I do not have the power to rescue her. The queen showed Tamino a portrait of Pamina. The instant Tamino saw Pamina's warm and gentle smile, he fell in love. I will find her, he vowed. If you bring her back to me, you may have her hand. In marriage, said the queen. Kaboom! And with another clap of thunder, the queen of the night disappeared. As Tamino prepared to leave on his quest, the three ladies approached. Poor Tamino, cooed the first lady. The forest is so dangerous. We must help him, said the second. Tamino, called the third. Here is a gift to protect you on your journey, a magic flute. When you play it, you will charm both man and beast. And you, Papageno, scolded one of the ladies, as punishment for claiming that you killed the dragon, you must go with Tamino through the dark forest to Sarastro's Temple of Light. Look at this beautiful flute, everyone. Do any of you play the flute, or do you have a favorite instrument that you love to perform music with? So the two men set off into the dark, dreary forest. Where are we? shivered Papageno. We've been walking for hours. I think we're lost, admitted Tamino, but we must be brave. Maybe some music will lift our spirits. With that, he took out his magic flute and began to play a tune. The ladies had been right, for as the beautiful music drifted through the forest, animals of all kinds crept softly out of their hiding places. Follow us, they said. We will lead you to Sarastro's Temple of Light. There it is, Tamino marveled when he saw the magnificent temple. Impressive, Papageno stammered with fright. You go on ahead, Tamino. Uh, I'll look around. Tamino pounded on the door. Sarastro, evil villain, answer me. You stole Pamina from the Queen of the Night, and I have come to rescue her. A priest opened the door and said, You are mistaken, young man. Sir Ostro is honest and noble. He is protecting Pamina. Her true destiny is to inherit Sir Ostro's kingdom of light. The queen is evil. She wants to destroy everything that is good even her own daughter. Sarastro is protecting the princess? The queen wants to harm Pamina? How can this be? Tamino wondered out loud. Then he remembered the queen's cruel, cold eyes. He realized that the priest was telling the truth. He shook his head sadly. I think I've made a terrible mistake, Tamino said to Papageno, but his friend was nowhere to be found. Tamino began to play his flute. Lucky Papageno, he had found Pamina. What a funny man you are, she said, laughing with delight. Who are you? I am Papageno. Prince Tamino and I have come to rescue you. It was a most dangerous journey, but nothing frightens me. Then they heard the sound of Tamino's music. Follow me, he said. 
The moment Pamina saw the prince, she fell in love. But before either of them could say a word, a gong sounded from somewhere deep within the temple, and the wise and powerful Sarastro greeted them. Right away, he saw how much the prince and princess loved each other. Pamina, I will give you my blessing to marry Tamino, he said, his eyes twinkling, but only if he can pass three tests, one of silence, one of patience, and one of courage. When Papageno heard that, he jumped up. What about me? I want a wife too. Very well, said Sarastro with a laugh. If you pass the test, then you will find love as well. A little Papagena. First was the test of silence. You mean no talking? That's easy, declared Papageno. But as he spoke, a mysterious mist arose around Tamino and Papageno. The Queen of the Night's three ladies emerged as graceful and lovely as twilight. Come, Tamino and Papageno, sing us a song, they teased. A song? Certainly! And without thinking, Papageno began to sing like a bird. Tweet, 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 tweet. Tomino shook his head to warn his friend and played his flute to keep from speaking. The gentle music soothed him, and the ladies vanished. Tomino had passed the first test, but alas, poor Papageno had not. Next, a table of delicious food was set before them. Oh good, Papageno exclaimed, something to eat while we wait for the next test. He had barely finished speaking before he started eating, smacking his lips and guzzling his drink greedily. Tamino was hungry too, the food looked delicious, but, he thought, this must be the test of patience. So again, he played the flute and soon forgot his hunger. Tamino passed the second test, but Papageno failed again. There was one more test to pass, the test of courage, a trial by fire and water. Suddenly, a huge wall of flames roared up before Tamino. I must be brave, Tamino trembled. Tamino, wait! Tamino called and came to his side. I will endure this test with you. Play your flute and the sweet music will protect us. Tamino felt his courage return. He held Pamina's hand and lifted the flute to his lips. He played a song, and together they stepped through the flames unharmed. They found themselves standing before an enormous waterfall. Tamino was not afraid. He began to play his flute. The water slowed, then stopped. Tamino and Pamina walked through hand in hand. The tests were over. Tamino had passed all three. Yay! Sarastro came forward and put his arms around their shoulders. Tamino and Pamina, I give you my blessing to marry. Together you will inherit my throne of light and bring much wisdom and happiness to the world. The evil queen of the night will have no power in this joyful land. Wailed the queen, who had been secretly watching. Her cry echoed throughout the land as she fled with her ladies into eternal darkness. Look at their crowns. What beautiful, beautiful crowns. I love them. But what about Papageno? Congratulations, Tomino, he sighed sadly. You and Pomino will be very happy together. As for me, I'd pluck my plumage for a sweetheart of my own. But Sarastro, with mischief in his eyes, patted the bird catcher's back. There now, Papageno, he said. You failed the tests, it is true. But I think the world is better off with a cheerful bird catcher than with a sad one. So I have one more test for you. An old woman hobbled over. Her face was lined with wrinkles and her hair was gray and stringy. Her rags were as old and tattered as cobwebs. Will you marry me, Papageno? She croaked. She smiled at him, showing her missing teeth. Oh dear, oh dear, she's hardly the kind of wife I imagined, Papageno muttered to himself. 
that maybe she's not so bad. Maybe she can catch birds, maybe she can cook, and she's surely better than no life at all. Papageno made up his mind. Yes, he said, I will marry you. Poof! With a flash of light and fluttering of feathers, the old woman disappeared. In her place, there stood a lovely young maiden dressed all in feathers. This is Papageno, Sarastro announced with a smile. The bird catches pride. Papageno's eyes were as round as coins. Pa! 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 Papageno! He stuttered. Oh, I am the luckiest bird catcher in the world! And so, not one, but two couples received Sarastro's blessing that morning. As the sun rose over the hills, the four friends walked off to a new life of peace and happiness, with the music of the magic flute to lead their way. The end. What a fun and adventurous and colorful story. There were so many different characters and adventures that they went on. I really enjoyed this one. Thank you all so much for joining me again with Storytime with Jordan. Until next time, bye!